Okay, so because I don't have slides, bear with me. I apologize. Let me just do a quick introduction of um, our guest today. Um, so this 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 cool dude um, is currently working as a data scientist at AI. Um, I'm forgetting the okay. AI Cross. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm at AI Cross in Tokyo. Um, previously, he was a machine learning engineer at Line Corporation, very popular messaging app um, for all of us, even those who are not in Japan. Um, he also served as a data scientist at Teradata and software engineer at ICANN Hacks Incorporated. Um, he's currently studying a lot of stuff about quantum computing, quantum machine learning, as we were chatting about it earlier. But his background in in University of the Philippines um, is civil engineering, geotechnical, and geoenvironmental engineering, where he graduated as a magna cum laude. Uh, and I think it's cool to mention that he studied in Philippine Science High School, <laughs> just to really establish and bring home um, the the cool fact that he's such a geek, um, and you know, just like I am, I consider my, myself a geek also. Um, and yeah, and I think he can also speak a little bit of Japanese. I'm, I'm curious about that. So later we will um, explore more of that. So let us welcome Neil John Ortega. <laughs> Hello, Neil. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, so thank you, Neil. Um, thank you for having me. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah do, do I introduce myself first? <laughs> yes, please. Um, please yeah, yeah. feel free. Yeah, so yeah, um again I'm I'm Neil Ortega. Um you can call me Neil. Um uh so as for my career, um so uh as Jean mentioned, um I was a civil engineering um graduate um from um the the Philippines. So uh but I did not practice um civil engineering. So <laughs> my first work in the Philippines was uh, at a software um uh company uh software uh, so it was in consulting and a, a little bit of um um product development r and d um type of work uh as a software engineer so uh, i worked there for five years and then um after working for um uh as a software engineer uh i switched to a, as i moved to a data science consulting um, role at Teradata, and then I worked there for three years, um, working with um, like uh, as a consultant for um, global uh, companies. Usually, the companies uh, we we help with their analytics problems were um, outside the Philippines. And then after working for Teradata as a data scientist for three years, I um, actually I decided to um, start exploring um, the the machine learning uh, space and data science space outside the Philippines. Um, and then there I was uh, lucky enough to uh, land a job as an ML engineer first at Line Fukuoka. So I entered Japan, not uh, through Tokyo. So uh, there, there's a reason why, um, uh, because uh, uh, Line Fukuoka doesn't have like the um, Japanese skill requirement. That's why um, uh, like for Line Fukuoka, they they uh, accept um, they, they hire um, non-Japanese um, speaking uh, uh, developers, uh, software engineers, um, machine learning engineers, etc. So all the, all the kinds of engineers <laughs> um, they hire that. So, so yeah, I got hired there as a machine learning engineer, and then I worked there for two years, three, uh, around two years, and then uh, until uh, I moved to um, uh, until I applied to uh, my current company now in Tokyo as a uh, data scientist. So I've been in the company for um, six months now uh, and um, oh, no, seven months and counting. <laughs> so that's the, like my quick, um, quick summary of my <laughs> uh, career. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. You've, you've been through, you've been through a lot already, I would say. Yeah, I, it, actually, I, sometimes uh, I get surprised when when I look back that I've already I've, I've been in this industry for maybe almost 
10 years, almost 11 years now <laughs> and counting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and data science is still a very new field. Mm, it's, yeah, yeah. it's exploding a little bit. Um, it looks different now compared to four years ago, but you were you were in it way before 2018. You were uh, already in it. Yeah, uh, so, 20, 20, so 2011, so around 2016, I was already um, uh, trying to enter the space. Um, actually, uh, for my data science consulting um, role, initially, I, if I remember correctly, uh, I was hired by the analytics team mostly for um, software, uh, more of software engineering related um, role or tasks. So because um, the analytics team, uh, analytics is not just about um, data, right? So you, you need, sometimes you need to build um, software around your um, data analysis or whatever, or um, machine learning model. So I was initially hired for that. And then slowly, like I asked for more, uh, like maybe I can try some data engineering tasks first, oh, and then cool. uh, after getting um, my feet wet uh, with um, like data engineering tasks, I kind of maybe can you give me? I uh, I ask my managers like maybe you can give me more data science, <laughs> um, uh, a role or task so that I, I can explore the space, and then eventually um, I, I got uh, I, the the rest of my state. Uh, stint as a data science consultant was uh, gear uh, focused towards data science uh, cool. uh, projects. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's break that down a little bit. So two curious things that I have in mind. So one is how you actually got into Japan, and the other one is how or where that came from. Your guts and adventure spirit to just say to your manager, hey, can I try this? Can you give me more data science work? So those two things. So first, how, how exactly did, did you get into Japan? <laughs> yeah, uh, hmm. Wait, let me let me Take a few steps back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for Japan, uh, actually, um, I, was, I was not specifically uh, looking for a role uh, in Japan. So when I was starting to look outside uh, roles outside the Philippines, I was like throwing applications randomly to different countries that <laughs> here and there. So maybe uh, I tried. I think I, if I remember correctly, I um, applied to um, countries in EU, some some countries in America, Australia. So I just tried <laughs> applying to a lot of uh, um, a lot of countries. companies that that. <laughs> that are looking for um, data scientists or machine learning or yeah i think even software so more, more senior software um roles so but yeah so and then uh, luck, uh for some some chance uh, luckily <laughs> um I, I, or by by some random chance i saw the job posting in linkedin from line fukuoka and then uh they explicitly uh, in the job description and they explicitly say that they don't require Japanese and there's um, relocation support. So, <laughs> and I think those are the main barriers for, um, to, to people trying to apply to um, roles um, uh, in Japan because it, it's a big barrier to, to, uh, to, um, uh, to, to overcome, right? Like one is language. Yeah. You, you have to be, to train for it or you have to study for it if you want to to pass and then and I actually uh usually for developer roles like they have um at least an entry and above mm -hmm. um japanese skills required because mm -hmm. you will be um talking with um native <laughs> japanese native so they, they will expect you to be able to communicate um technical things yeah. uh with your teammates your manager so sometimes um they, they most of the time actually they, they ask you that so um but luckily with line for uh, they 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 don't require um the the language requirement and then also the real they have relocation support so that's one problem out of my <laughs> yeah, so i, I was able to, to to uh with that out of um the way i was able to prepare for the actual um, 
job interview well so so yeah i i think that uh, it, it's a little bit of mix of luck but actually right now um a quick uh linkedin um job search will give you some uh job postings that uh, say explicitly in the job description that they don't require um uh, japanese language skill uh, minimum Jap japanese language or they are willing to relocate and uh they, they support relocation to the country so yeah. if, if you find um those kinds of job postings and uh, you think that your skill set is a fit then i, I would suggest uh, just just try it <laughs> <laughs> true so where did that adventurous spirit come from because you said you kind of you know spread cast the wide net you just kept sending uh, yes yeah. so, uh, hmm. so i think uh maybe I, I just had an idea back then that um uh since, since my role was um a data science consultant back then right in the philippines but i was uh, working with um teams uh, with varying backgrounds like global teams and i saw that uh like mo most of the what do you call it the, the progress or like the advancements in the field or in the, both in the field and in the industry are uh, outside <laughs> uh outside the philippines mm -hmm. so and if, if i want to get uh good in the field i want if i want to learn from like the, the best or like that the, the people are pushing the field forward uh mm -hmm. i will have a greater chance of being able to achieve that if i try to apply outside or I, if i get if i land a job outside uh, the philippines and i think uh yeah and, and right uh, i think the ecosystem is different now in the philippines like there are uh, data science some um, programs already um coming out like from universities like i think university of the philippines has one aim like uh Asian institute of management i think has one as well so USD right also yeah and the usd they have like like a bachelor's right yes they yeah. just launched it this year yeah yeah so uh, those were not present <laughs> uh <laughs> back then like how many years ago five years ago so yeah. the only experience you, you can only get experience from being able to work in the field and and i think i just uh, somehow i uh yeah some uh it's a it's a mixture of um luck i guess and being strategic strategic yeah. on on <laughs> on um where you want to be and then aligning your what are you doing currently uh, aligning yourself and then so that um you you get to where you want to be the the quickest way possible <laughs> something <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> i think i that's like the... it yeah i like that you shared that because it's not a common trait um for filipinos to just go and put yourself out there and try it out you know because it's easier to um it's easier to be discouraged, especially that there are, you know, usually companies have their Japanese language requirement and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So I like that you shared that. That's, that's very, um, hopefully that's motivating for, for a lot of our audience members here. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to say welcome to everyone else who, who just joined. And Andrew, yes, um, yeah, if, if you're part of the community um, in the newsletter and inside the platform, you will have access to the recording um yeah okay so that's so cool how is the so so right now how's your japanese now that you mentioned the language and stuff how is that Sorry? coming along how's your japanese language as for that um actually uh my first company so line Tokoka has um like they they uh provide uh like language learning support as well since since um they hire uh non-japanese um speakers so they hire uh they 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 uh set aside like they enroll you to japanese class cool. for like i think 
for me it was three sessions like uh, every week three times three times a week you, you study japanese um one and a half hours per session but and then um and then you need to um take the exam yeah like so of course you need to take the exam at jlpt so you can prove that you're learning <laughs> yeah but then um i uh then uh so there's that system in place but uh when i joined uh line for uh it was i think a few months after i joined covid the the whole uh, the whole covid exploded um, pandemic exploded and like um you and you can only take jlpt in person so mm -hmm. <laughs> uh i wouldn't take I, I don't want to take the risk back then and so uh, it got delayed and delayed <laughs> until up to the point that uh, I wasn't able to, uh, to to take the exam. But yeah, so we, with that, um, uh, right now my my <laughs> my other com uh, my uh, latest company doesn't also doesn't <laughs> uh, require Japanese. Um, uh, uh, it, it, it's a bit uh, it's a bit weird my setup with my current company uh, they yeah. did not require uh any japanese language skills for, on me for me or even though more, the entire team the entire the uh, ai team was um were, were um uh, couldn't speak english, speak english. Like, only there's, <laughs> there's only a few like less than a handful like two two of my teammates can speak um english but the, the rest um they, they mainly communicate in japanese so yeah. <laughs> and i am not um practicing um like as i have said um in our quick um pre pre chat <laughs> earlier like if you don't practice it um you you lose it so right now um i can't speak um japanese well i, I mainly communicate with my teammates via English and then they translate with the other teammates. <laughs> you so, don't use Google Translate or Papa Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Now. But uh the the Japanese support uh, the, the the support for uh in line was um, better because for example um in meetings they like they, they hire translators like uh no translators um interpreters they they mm -hmm. hire interpreters so and the interpreters sit um with um people in the meeting so they can um interpret, interpret simultaneously <laughs> so oh and well that's understandable because line is a bigger company they they have the yeah. budget for it uh, but as compared to i think my current company which is um smaller so uh <laughs> they don't um focus much on it but I think, uh, yeah, they, they get away with that because um, now I can get away <laughs> um, with that because I think they, they prioritize what I can bring to the table, which yeah. is <laughs> my specialty, uh, my, my specialization. <laughs> so they, they yeah, don't yeah. care <laughs> about the. <laughs> but but this one is um like a case to case basis, of course. Like, yeah. True. <laughs> I, I just got um lucky, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh that's beautiful yeah that's, that's the other message that we want to send across as as we're building matcha jobs is that there's a booming community of startups in japan both japanese owned and internationally owned by foreigners uh, mm -hmm. where they are bringing their presence in japan and that's one of the motivations we have at matcha jobs to open the gate and be the bridge mm -hmm. for filipino tech folks to connect them with companies in Japan, so I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, and you're actually uh you actually have the first hand experience of, of that, and and it's so so interesting, know how you're able to navigate and contribute to the organization, even though you you don't speak the language. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I I need to translate, <laughs> like yeah. I, I just use a Google Translate, um for example, like but um uh minor stuff i can google translate on my own but for like mission critical yeah. um things i communicate via uh using english because i'm more comfortable with that and then they just translate because yeah, yeah. um like 
uh, it, it, it's um, what do you call it? It's bad to mess up <laughs> yes, <laughs> when, yes. when you're trying to implement something, right? Uh, as a software engineer or as, a, as an engineer. So better yeah. to <laughs> use the language you're comfortable with. Cool. So how was, can you share with us how long it took for your visa to be processed? What was the timeline between you verbally uh, verbally signed, agreed to that Fukuoka mm -hmm. contract to the day you landed in Japan. How long did that take for you? Uh, I think on my case, it took a little longer than expected because um, so initially uh, I could have flown to Japan a little bit earlier. Um, like the, the visa application process is quite smooth. Like uh, so, so the steps are, uh, for example, the company will ask you to fill out um, a form, uh, like the application for the um, COE. Um, I forgot the <laughs> certificate of eligibility. A uh, certificate of eligibility. So they they ask you to um, sign, fill out the form, attach your photo to it, and then send it to them via um, air DHL. mail. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, via email. Yes. So that could take um, uh, maybe two weeks maximum. So two weeks maximum. And then uh, after they get your application form, they will apply it to their, um, like the immigration bureau uh, in Japan. So in that might take maybe one, one month or maybe a little bit longer, one to two months, give and take. Mm -hmm. And then they will send you, once they get the COE, they will send it back to you via airmail so that you can use that for your um, visa application. In the uh, so that's another two, maybe one week, two weeks. So maybe, mm -hmm. so we're now in two months already. Yeah, yeah. two months and then you can apply um, a visa for your uh, visa uh, in the Philippines. And then once you get your visa, I think that's the end of it. And so, so once you apply, uh, once you send the requirements for your visa application, it's just um, another waiting game for <laughs> the yeah. final waiting game, right? So, and that might take, huh, I can't, maybe three months? Uh, no, one month. So three months total, I think. But on my case, um, I think um, uh, because line, uh, I was um, Lion Fukuoka's first hire from the Philippines. Cool. So they don't know the process with the POEA and the like how to mm. um, handle OFWs. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. the, the the so I think we, we missed a couple of steps like mm. um uh, applying their company to Polo and then um talking with um a different um like an agency in the Philippines. So like those um um, parties that needs to be needs to get uh, involved involved with the process, so uh, we backtrack. <laughs> so um, with and then the CO my COE has a uh, in general the COE has an expiration date, right? So that you need to be, you need to be able to fly to Japan until your COE expires. So um, sadly, <laughs> my the the first COE I got um. Expired. Got expired. So we need to uh, <laughs> do it again. To do it again. So, um, but after that, I was um, I was able to 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 fly to Fukuoka um with no um issues. So maybe on my case, it's three three times two plus a little bit another um couple of months coordinating with the the agencies and waiting from the res uh response from different agencies. So, uh, maybe. Um, eight months, almost, yeah, eight months, eight months on my case, but it could be um, a way easier depending on the company. Uh, yeah. Usually uh, for that, I would suggest um, ask, for, for example, you're in that stage already that um, you, you already accepted um, an offer from a Japanese company, uh, ask the company if they know the, the process with yeah. hiring. <laughs> You get to <laughs> you don't need to um uh, you, you get to uh 
to, to the end of the process I'm right away like you, yeah. you don't experience <laughs> what I experienced <laughs> got it yeah that's um it's it's interesting you mentioned that because that's another mission of matcha jobs um we have such a great um great ties with the Philippine and Japanese immigration and that's that's one of the things we are offering in matcha jobs we want to help employees uh well the the employers get Filipinos in Japan um in you know in in no time because we're already we already have my co-founder has a great uh, recruitment um, company um and you know he he knows all of the all of those processes we do that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's so interesting to know you were the first filipino hire by line and they had to go through that they didn't know yeah they, they, they weren't um, they, don't, they don't know the process <laughs> <laughs> but uh i think uh, there was after that um uh after that since they already know the process i think they were able to hire another one from the yeah. philippines uh, because I'm, um, during um, I got this information when I was applying for my visa, um, what do you call it? Uh, I need to, I, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot the term. Um, reapply for, or I need to renew my visa, right? After some time, yeah. because it will expire. Yeah. So, and then for the immigration bureau, they will submit a form of, oh, these are the hires from this country. And from from that, um, like I saw that they already hired another one from the Philippines, so uh -huh. that was some <laughs> um good um information you were, to, to know yeah. that um they're you they're paved hiring, the way <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're hiring um other people from the country. So so to to people out there like you want to try, I think yeah, I think Line Fukuoka is actively hiring for now. I think yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, just 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 so do a search in LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, so many companies are actually hiring, especially now that Japan is uh, is fully open even to tourists. So it's such a good time, such a right ripe time for for people to to try it out. Um, how was your how was your move? How what preparations did you make <laughs> to actually move to Japan from the Philippines? Mm -hmm. So the, for the actual move. Uh -huh. so aside from like the visual um logistics uh like i need to <laughs> yeah. um like settle some things um in the philippines for example uh usually a uh, bank related stuff mm -hmm. like uh, those kind of things um i think i flew to japan uh we just with we just um my uh, a little bit of my um, personal belongings <laughs> so, uh, one luggage okay. one check-in bag yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah like luggage and then um and then uh, uh the, the only thing my, my only concern back then was how will i be able to connect to the internet <laughs> <laughs> because of um course. uh the, the 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 relocation support for a line back then was um, uh, really good. So they, uh, I'm not sure if um, all companies do that do this, but I think they do. But um, as part of the relocation support, they will uh, arrange for your temporary stay, for a temporary stay for you until um, you can find your final um, like apartment that's um, named under you, right? So. In my case, I was able. Uh, I I stayed for the temporary stay for um one year. Ah, well, no, 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 one year, one month. Sorry, <laughs> one month. I was one month. Say, that's long. Yeah, that's long. So one month. Uh, they will arrange a temporary stay for you, and then during that one month, um, hopefully you should be able to find um your your like final um, uh rented place, mm -hmm. and then they will also. In my case, they line also supported me on like um ap application for for the rental property because um um it uh it's kind of um it's quite strict here so so some property owners are strict here in in japan like like they have um policies that they don't accept um foreigners something like that so but once you get to find your the, the 
apartment that you want to live in for uh, usually the duration is like um uh, one year or two years like two year contract for an apartment so once you you find it then um surely the company will support you actually they 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 sign like uh they will be part of the um like the contract contract signing yeah, yeah because they, they serve will... as the guarantor yeah, I say they they deserve, they serve as the guarantor for the the property. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, I think. Yeah, I I was able uh, I was able to uh, get by with with just um, knowing how to connect to the internet because <laughs> uh, the the relocation support and the expat support for um line was um, really great back then. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and I, I like that you mentioned that it really varies, you know, based on the company that's hiring you. And then once you start searching or hunting for uh, an apartment or a dorm in some case, um, it mm-hmm. also varies. You know, some owners might allow you to have a pet or or yeah, not yeah, allowed yeah. or, you know, it really varies. Yeah. So you just really have to look for, for you know, whatever is convenient for you keep looking until you find that that mm-hmm. place um, yeah, so, so, uh, is... uh, with, with with that like uh, it's it's good to again if you you're you're on the on that stage of um you already accepted an offer i think it's good to ask these kind of questions to your um mm-hmm. uh, future employer <laughs> yeah. like how how is the relocation support uh, uh, up to what extent is the relocation mm-hmm. support um do you reimburse like uh, yeah, that 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 uh, yeah that that uh, that the reimbursement is critical because uh, in some cases it you might have to um, shell out uh, money for the initial fees and then the company will reimburse you so uh, those kinds of considerations you need to um, incorporate in your um, planning ahead yeah yeah uh, some companies might um, pay for the initial fees for you so better to mm-hmm. clarify that um, yeah. early on <laughs> good point yeah yeah yeah. i want to open the conversation to folks who might want to ask questions so guys start um you know typing in your questions in the chat box or even comments um on you know anything that you know um neil and i have covered so far um usually neil the biggest questions are you know the, the very talking points that you mentioned, you know, the language and then finding an apartment and then visa process and then um, some of the other common questions that we get are around cost of living, you know, how much does it cost to, how much do you need to, to survive like in a month, you know, thinking about the food as a single person, yeah. you know, what would you... And we'll get to zero after you. If for for the cost of living, uh huh. Yeah, usually. <clears throat> actually, I don't. <laughs> I haven't ha- <laughs> had a chance to to check my <laughs> expenses. That's fine too. In the past. Um, okay. Yeah, but uh, actually, the the cost of living varies depending on where uh, yeah. in Japan you will live. For example. Um, in Fukuoka, Fukuoka is way cheaper than in uh, Tokyo. So, um, for example, uh, on my move from Fukuoka to Tokyo, I need to consider the the uh, in in computing my final compensation. I need to consider the um, price, uh, like the cost of living difference yeah. <laughs> between yeah. Fukuoka and. So uh, in Tokyo, so for example, just a benchmark uh, in Fukuoka, my previous um, apartment was, I think it was um, 70,000 yen per month. And then now in Tokyo, it's um, uh, 70,000 yen per month. And it's in the, uh, the apartment is like everything um, you ask for an apartment. It's close to the station. It's uh, the station is like uh, the station is like two two. Uh, the area is like two stations away from my office, so mm-hmm. the commute is convenient and fast. So, um, as compared to my apartment in Tokyo right now, which is around uh, ninety thousand yen per month, 
But and this one is uh, my apartment right now in Tokyo is a 10 minute walk from the station, nearest station. And then the travel to my office is uh, more than one hour, one way. So, <laughs> so the, the price varies and then like the, the condition varies uh, a lot. So sometimes um, you need to um, do that um, research uh, yeah. when, when considering um, like uh, cost yeah, of living. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, let's hear Jiro's question. Uh, okay, uh, I regret for coming in late because uh, something came up at work. Uh, but my question is not really related to the previous one. It's really more on uh, as a data, uh, as a person working in the data industry, can you tell that Japan is mature enough to distinguish the roles between the data engineer, data scientist, machine learning engineer? Hmm. Ah, good question. Um, it depends on the company. Uh, for example, usually uh, from from experience uh, which which from my experience which is like two companies <laughs> and counting um so for bigger companies i think the division is much clearer for example in in my working line i was a machine learning engineer so um my my work is mostly on the engineering side of things uh, based on the name and then our uh, half of the team was machine learning engineers and half of the team were, were data scientists and the concerns of um, both teams were uh, entirely separate. Like, so the data science team was more um, like, uh, what they call it? Uh, they, they, they handle um, different concerns of the company. They, they solve different problems. We, we solve different problems of the company. But now on my role as a data scientist, but since the the, the company is much smaller. It's almost like a startup. So I get to wear um, different hats. So sometimes I need to, uh, even though my role is a data scientist, I, I, I get assigned tasks that are that's like more machine learning related, more um, software application related. So <laughs> um, I think it's better to ask um, maybe the best. Um, during the interview process with the hiring manager, I think it's the best time to ask for um, clarifications or distinctions regarding that um, delineation between data uh, scientist, data engineer, machine learning engineer. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you for you. answering the question. Yeah, that was a good question to you. Welcome back. Um, John Miguel, what's your question? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Neil. I have a question for you. Um, I am also a senior graduate just like you, and I'm currently working at one of Philippine IT consultancy. I sent you to be specific as application mm -hmm. development associate. As a career shifter, my question is how hard for us to apply for technology positions, specifically at work? Should we need to get a degree in computer science or any related course? Uh, um, sorry, uh, I think Did you the, the, the audio broke. Um, yeah. <laughs> hello? John, yeah, so, could you, uh, okay. could you repeat? Um, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, can you repeat the last part of the question? It, it... Um, as a career shifter, my question is how hard for us to apply for technology position, specifically abroad? Should we need to get a degree in computer science or any related course? Mm. Ah, good question. Um, usually, um, I think uh, for uh, at least for the machine learning or data science field, um, they they are not kind of specific with um, like, like your background or degree. Usually, um, the only requirement is like uh, you have um, skills in computation. Like so, it, it, it uh, computation is uh, a broad um field like engineering, uh, statistics, math, physics, those kinds of backgrounds. Um, usually they entertain. Um, but uh, that's just one um step or part of it. Um, the 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 next question is um, uh, if do you have the 
the, the skills that they're looking for. So for example, if uh, usually the job listings or the job postings will um, mention specific skill sets that they are looking for candidates, for example, um, some, some will specifically say that they're looking for someone um, who has um, software engineering um, background for so and so years. So, but but sometimes the uh, the, the years are not important. So sometimes you can try and apply for that. But I think uh, as long as um, uh, you you have uh, like loosely speaking like a computational background or um science background, and then you you match some of the job um requirements. Sometimes it usually it's not uh, an all or nothing thing with the job um, uh, posting. So sometimes if you, you, you've been able to work on um, programming projects and then they're looking for that. And then, um, yeah, I think you can, you, you can, you can try like uh, applying. Like for me, <laughs> I, I just tried <laughs> uh, uh, um, when, during my um, jump from uh, data science in the Philippines to the line. So I just uh, tried. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you for that informative answer. Thank you. Thank you, John. The, we have a question from Jill directed to Matcha Jobs. Um, hi, may I ask if Matcha Jobs would also focus on job opportunities that provide relocation? Um, it is our top priority. We literally want to bring Filipinos to Japan, Filipinos who who have worked in the tech industry, who have a tech background, just like what uh, Neil also said, some companies don't necessarily look to check all the, uh, you know, the checklist in their job description. Um, usually those with um, backgrounds um, or experience, better if you have the experience in, in some computational or math or science um, fields, that would be an advantage for you. So. So yeah, we that's our main priority, Jill. We want to be able to start sending Filipinos from the Philippines to Japan to work in different tech roles. So not just software engineers. We want to bring Filipinos here um, who have UX UI design, um, you know, data science, obviously machine learning engineer. These are the hot um, positions, but there are many, many, many more. So. And you know, as as long as you're part of the community, you will find out as we go, as we grow, and as we um, become more stable in our offerings, you will find out what else is in store. Um, but yes, yeah, uh, we are too. <laughs> and thank you for being here too. Uh, what other questions do we have, guys? We have eleven minutes left. Um, I am curious about meals. Um, you know, like what are the top things that you missed about the Philippines? <laughs> because you've been here how long now? Uh, around wait, 2019, end of 2019. So um, around three years now. Three, Although, four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three years. Hmm. Some, uh, wait, no. have you returned to visit ever since 2019 or no? I was able to visit um, for um, six months. Uh, last year. Oh. Yeah, last year, I was able to from from March to I think September. Yeah, six months. During the pandemic. I was, yeah, I was in the Philippines. Um, we were just waiting for um like the situation to get better, and then just need to wait for announcements from the embassy that uh yes, you just need to do this, and then you will be able to go back Return. to Japan without. Yeah issues <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah because during that time like it was hard sometimes um, yeah. the, the policies change a lot mm -hmm. really fast Ch changed a lot and quickly mm -hmm. um back then so uh, if um anytime like japan might close its borders again so we were just waiting for that um, um sweet spot of flying back to the philippines without um <laughs> Um, getting worried about not being able to <laughs> getting return. stuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, did you did you return for CAS and then did you come here together or? Uh, no, not together. Mm. But yeah, I returned for yeah to to be um to spend some time with my wife again, and then oh. we need to uh 
also um are handle or arrange some uh things <laughs> like yeah, again yeah. um finance financial yes yes <laughs> uh, <laughs> so adult <laughs> adult yes <thing>. adult thing <laughs> things <laughs> um so and then um i went back to japan a little bit earlier so after the six months because um yeah the six months is the the maximum you can stay outside japan but outside japan but employed by a japanese because usually um there are tax related um things if you stay um longer because mm-hmm. sometimes you need to pay the tax ah there's the issue of where uh, which country will you pay your taxes those kind of yeah. things and the company you, i wouldn't uh, I, i would not like to hassle the <laughs> um company with that um issue um so yeah. i just stayed my the maximum amount which is six months and then i went back to the uh to japan and then yeah and then my wife uh followed a couple of months later i think uh if i remember correctly uh december last year she flew to um Uh, she flew to Japan right before Japan closed its borders again. Again, <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Micron variant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when I met her in LinkedIn, we were talking about how I I arrived just a few weeks before she did. So mm-hmm. and it was like uh, you know the borders were open and then close again and open and close again. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. oh okay. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. So, so what do you miss about Japan? Uh, what the Philippines? Top three, maybe. The Philippines. Uh, hmm, maybe, maybe the food. At uh, at some point, you'll get used to the food in Japan, and definitely you'll miss some of the things, that, uh, like like your favorite things. Uh, your favorite uh, favorite food from the Philippines, and sometimes uh, you can't uh get the ingredients here. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get the ingredients here like the exact uh, ingredients that you need to use to to prepare the dish so the, that one then um some activities i think uh like because of mm, they call it geographic constraints like some activities you can only do in the philippines for example um my my wife introduced me to uh free diving and have uh, free diving is um uh, It's not quite easy to to do free diving here. Um, like there's just a limited um amount of um a limited number of spots where you can do that as compared to the Philippines, which is like us being uh an archipelagic yeah. <laughs> yeah. an uh, yeah archipelagic country. So like there are a lot of spots. Uh, so those kinds of things like activities. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, mainly being able to like uh, uh, catch up with friends like in person, <laughs> although yeah. uh, that that's a bit um, reduced uh, due to the pandemic. And if, even if I flew back to the Philippines uh, back then, then I still wouldn't be able to <laughs> yeah. do uh, do that with, uh, with we meet up with friends and family. You know. Yeah. Okay. Well, while we're still waiting for questions, last five minutes. Um, so if you guys have questions, ask them now. Um, you're free to just chat if you don't want to speak, or you can chime in, raise your hand, so you can actually say your question, ask your question. Um, another thing I'm curious about, Neil, is maybe some, maybe share some of the things that you were surprised to discover when you were newly landed. You were new working in Japan. What were maybe two to three things that surprised you that you didn't know that oh okay this is what it's like to work in Japan. <laughs> mm. uh, um, I can't um, pinpoint um <laughs> a specific <laughs> answer. Um, one um I think uh my first company, uh, during my first uh in my first company, it's uh, the, the environment is quite um global. Already since they are hiring, um, they're open to hiring um expats uh, with inline Fukuoka. Like some of my teammates were from uh yeah, from Europe, <laughs> not not direct teammates, but um uh, some departments they hire um people from Europe, from um uh, India, Pakistan, something like that. so so uh 
not much in the like the work environment. Hmm. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, you, you could look at it as a surprise since um like some some com uh like we, we have this um image of the traditional um uh Japanese um working person, right? And I think they're trying to move away from that, especially the, the tech companies. Uh so I think um if you're applying for, for tech, uh you don't need to be afraid of the uh working con uh like the working conditions like the typical um the sal image of a salary man like salary man <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that yeah. uh, it's over time overwork i think most um uh, tech companies or software companies frown uh frown upon that um, um image they, they want um they, they promote um work-life balance i think yeah even um yeah, from actually in both my companies, from Line and my current company, like uh, they they promote um, work life balance as compared to like traditional, more traditional um, Japanese roles. Nice. You you slightly answered Angelica's yeah, yeah. question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, actually, <laughs> looking at it. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. So just just to read it out, totoo po ba na masyadong ma-OT ang Japanese employee? Like, sub-sub po talaga sa work among employees or dependent? Ha ha! <laughs> Do you want to yeah, add to it, that? It, it depends on the industry, for one thing. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it depends on the industry and, like, the company. Yeah, But but mostly if you're... um, I, I think Matcha is focusing with um, tech um, tech roles, right? So I think it's not that's it's not that big of a problem yeah and then just to add to that yes it really depends just like just like in the philippines just like in many other countries it really depends what one of the favorite things i love about working in japan is that japan the japanese working culture is um they're just they're really serious about the work but when yeah. they're having fun they're really having fun so yeah that's one yeah, of it's, my it's like, favorite um, things uh, every night like they uh, every friday night like they ask for you if you want to join them uh yeah. drink uh go to an izakaya izakaya and <laughs> drink <Yeah. laughs> but i don't drink so usually i <laughs> i decline their offers to join sometimes i do but but yeah most of the time i don't but yeah 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 it's super fun okay we're we're down to our last minute um this is not enough i personally have more questions and hopefully we can have um, Neil back in some way, some format down the road. Um, but for now, I want to thank everybody for being here, um, for those who joined and went, and those who just joined recently and asked their questions. And thank you for being a part of the community, all of you. Um, Neil, thank you so much. Um, for those who are not aware, our guest last week, our amazing guest last week, Kath Poblete, is the wife of Neil. So there's such a cool couple both working in the tech space in Japan representing the Philippines right represent mm -hmm. so <laughs> um yeah and maybe one last tip anything if you were to sum up you know a, like a tip advice for Filipinos who want to work in tech companies in Japan what would that be you know? yeah I guess um uh just um Fly and try. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I think um I, I think that's the like the main um my, the main um lesson here is like um if, if you don't try applying to to jobs then your success rate is zero right mm -hmm. As compared if to if you try and then you get lucky or some company gets interested in your profile then you, you did not lose anything in the process right. <laughs> So I think um, I, I, uh, you should. That's that's um, what I tell even uh, to my friends that ask me for um, advice to ask uh, regarding like um, apply, applying the jobs. Like just try, just try it. Um, don't don't think uh, about it too much. Like, but 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 you need to do your um, fair share of preparation, right? Um, um, look look at the job details. Um, uh, examine which skills you are lacking and prepare for it. Ask questions. Um, if you something is not clear, ask questions. Be proactive and yeah, just apply and 
yeah yeah again if, if you don't apply then uh you're 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 sure to to fail right yeah <laughs> just shoot your shot <laughs> <laughs> i love how it's so simple the way you know the, the advice that you gave but really as, as simple as it sounds it's also hard to just get the courage to even apply to one company so i love that you emphasize that yeah i, um, I guess um uh that's one um barrier that you need to 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 come across uh to to, to get um overcome. over with oh uh, yeah to, to overcome like um yeah just but but by the end of the day like yeah you just need to <laughs> Just, just yeah. do it. <laughs> just do it. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. It, um, it, it gets better. Um, the, the more you apply, the more comfortable you will be uh, applying to jobs. So um, for maybe for a strategy to applying, maybe you can try. Um, for example, you have a company in mind that you want to get into. Uh, you, may, you may want to delay it, delay your application to that company so that for example, you already applied to several companies before, then at the time that you interview for that company or apply for that company, you're already uh, prepared in terms of um, interview process, preparation and whatnot, and whatnot. Yeah, so yeah. Yes, yes, some of the interviews are just, you know, your training ground, and that's okay, that's still valuable. Okay, we're gonna take a group photo, if that's okay, so for those who are comfortable, um please turn on your videos um, and i will stop recording